We're back at it again with a couple of nickel boxes. Two more chances to find the 50D. Or will we find something else cool for the collection like we did in the last hunt? Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure. Welcome back to my channel. We have another two box nickel hunt in our quest to find that 50D before the 167th box. That way series two sets a new personal best for completion boxes compared to series one. Now that being said, this is episode number 127 and it's boxes 117 and 118 of the series two book. We need that 50D in this book and we still need five more nickels for the series three album, which hopefully we'll get something from these two boxes today. Now, I've struggled this year with nickels when it comes to silver nickels, even though I have found some. We're not finding as many as we did last year. And matter of fact, we've been struggling with silver and everything but half dollar so far for 2023. Now, I will give you a look at the books when I'm done with the hunt to see if we have any upgrades or additions, which I hope we do. But for now, we're going to take the books and set them aside and get right to the hunt. Now, I had to pop the top of this first box to make sure we had circulated nickels, which we do. But this box, I can see from the holes in the bottom that we have circulated nickels. So we definitely have a 100 roll hunt today. And obviously, I'm looking for silver. We're looking for dates that we need for the books. We're looking for upgrades, buffalo nickels, V nickels, foreigns, proofs, varieties, you name it, the whole nine yards. I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to start cracking rolls. And I'll see you on my first find in the first box of this hunt. Roll number nine is going to give us our first Jefferson nickel from the 40s. It's facing me, so it's a 1946 Philadelphia. Roll number 20, another 1940 Jefferson nickel, but this time it is a 1940 Philly. Well, we're on roll number 34 of the slow box, and it continues to be pretty slow, but we do have another 40s nickel. It's a 1948, pretty damaged, minted in Philadelphia. Well, we're on roll 35, and normally I don't show the 50s, but when I flip this one around, we have a semi-key day nickel, a 1955 Philadelphia. Definitely a lower mintage. It's not in the best shape, but it's good to see a semi-key day nickel in the hunt and in the box, even though it's been relatively quiet so far. Now let's get back to the hunt and see if that changes our luck. Roll number 41 is going to give us our oldest Jefferson nickel of the hunt. It's a 1939 with decent detail. But it's definitely circulated. Will it have a mint mark to be a key date? And I can't tell. It doesn't look like it. And no, it does not have a mint mark. Although it almost looks like there could be an S there. Could just be damage. Let me take a quick peek at that. Wipe it down and be right back. All right. I wiped it down. That's not a mint mark. It's just some perfectly placed damage there. So we'll go ahead and check it to see if it has that DDR from 1939 Philadelphia which I don't see, and does it have the Henning notch? It does not. Just a regular 1939 nickel, but it's in decent shape, and I'll take it. It's the oldest find of the box. Roll number 42, our first Jefferson nickel from 1941. Also damaged, and from Philly. Roll number 48, another 1940 nickel. From Denver this time. Roll number 50, last roll of the box. At least one parting gift, a 1941 Philadelphia. Same roll, and the very last three coins of the roll will give us a second parting gift, and it's another 1939. Will it have a mint mark? And it does not. 1939 Philadelphia. Is it a DDR? It is not. We would see it on Monticello and on the word five cents. Two 1939 nickels, and that's going to be it for this hunt. I'll be back with the wrap-up. Well, that's it for box number one. And you know what? It made a nice comeback as far as total fines. We do have 20 nickels on the board, which is about what I want in a nickel box, 20 to 25. Although we didn't get any buffalo nickels and we didn't get any silver nickels, but we did get a semi key date 1955P and a couple of 1939s. Nothing for the book that I can see right here right now, but we have a second box to hunt. Let me go ahead and slide this second box over. It has a little bit of damage, but either way... Oh, it's really damaged, actually. Hopefully, it has a fancy ender for us inside. Well, we definitely have some old Jefferson nickel enders, but I don't see anything fancy schmancy. All right, we'll continue the hunt. Roll number 51 out of 100, and I'll be back with my first find of box number two. Roll number 62. 
We've got a pretty damaged 1941 nickel from Philly. Roll number 82. Our first Jefferson nickel from 1947. This one's going to be a Philadelphia. Just grabbed roll 83 out of the box, flipped it around, and we've got a foreign coin. And based on the design, I think that's going to be a Singapore 20 cents. Let's make sure it is. That 20 cent foreign ender is from, it is from Singapore, 1989. We'll take that one first foreign of the hunt. 17 rolls left, plus this one. Roll number 89, and the second coin in is another nice, 1939. Will there be a mint mark? And there's not. Still a nice 39 though. Let's just check for any of the doubling that could be on it. I don't see any doubling. Definitely a Philadelphia. A little bit of machine doubling, of course, but that's not the DDR. We'll take it though. Nicest of the three we found so far. Running out of rolls. Roll number 90. Another 1939 nickel. Not as nice as the last one. Also from Philly. DDR. And it doesn't appear to have the DDR either. Philadelphia minted for sure. We'll take it though. 439s. No 38s. Silvers. Buffaloes. 50s. You name it. Let's keep looking. Same roll. And the last coin in the roll, which was reverse facing on the outside, is going to be a 1949 Philadelphia. First from that year. Roll number 91, and the box is starting to heat up. We've got another 40s Jefferson nickel, a 1941 Philly. Roll number 96, just another 1941 nickel. Philadelphia yet again. Roll number 97 will give us a nickel I love finding. Finally, we got one. You can already see the Buffalo nickel. I was just sliding them down. We definitely have a Buffalo nickel. And it looks like it's going to be dated. You know what? That's a 1930. We'll take a 1930 dated Buffalo nickel from Philadelphia with decent detail and somewhat of a horn. Definitely we'll take that one. That's a nice surprise. Oldest find of the hunt. First significant find. Still no silver, but only three rolls left. But I love seeing the Buffaloes. Roll number 99. Our second nickel from 1948. And that's a 48 Denver. Man, I thought it was a 48 S for a second. Well, we finished that two-box hunt, and despite the lack of great finds, we actually had 45 finds on the board, not including some nicer coins, which I'll cover. A lot of them in the 40s and 50s. Again, nothing really significant on the top side, but the best finds of the box are going to be a really nice 1959 Denver, a nice 1963 Philly, not the TDR, a whole bunch of nice 1963 Denvers. None of these coins up here have full steps, and then a absolutely beautiful 1966 not a special mid set strike this has got to be a regular business strike and that is a beauty probably will upgrade in the collection we got four 1939s all philadelphia all common we got the singapore 20 cent piece we got a better date 1951 philadelphia and actually it's not in that bad a shape to be honest we'll check that against the book a slightly better date 1951 denver in terrible shape probably won't upgrade a 1955 semi-key date Jefferson nickel. And then the find of the hunt really, I guess, is going to be this pretty nice 1930 Philadelphia Buffalo nickel with decent detail. Now that we've shown all the finds, I need to go through them and see if we have any upgrades. I don't think we're going to have any additions because we really didn't have any key dates. But let me go ahead and search through them, see if we have any upgrades and additions. And if I do, I'll bring you back with a recap and a look at the books. Well, we've compared all the finds to both books. I did not have any upgrades for the Series 2 album, although the 1966 that I found in nice shape probably could upgrade this one, but when I checked it against my personal collection, it upgraded the one I had in there, which was also nice. And unfortunately, when I upgraded mine, this one technically is not much better than the one that's in this book, so we're not going to upgrade that today. So no upgrades, no additions for Series 2, still missing the 50D. For Series 3, we actually had a couple of upgrades. We did put one of the nicer 1939s I found today in the book, so that's upgrade number one. And then that really nice 1959 Denver we found, we plugged in here as well. So a couple of upgrades for the Series 3 book, still missing those five tough dates, stuck at 60 out of 65. 118 boxes searched for Series 2, 53 boxes searched for Series 3. 
That leaves us 49 boxes left to find that 50D to beat the Series 1 completion boxes. Hopefully, despite the lack of silver yet again, you guys still found this hunt enjoyable. I know I did. We had good finds. We had a nice buffalo. Got an upgrade for my personal set and a few upgrades for Series 3. If you did, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting and thanks for watching.